Ladies and gentlemen, this is Red Gaming Citicom video. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, there's a good possibility you've heard of AMD's upcoming GPU architecture. We learned just recently it is, of course, going to be known as Polaris. And along with its official naming uh, reveal, we've also learned various details concerning the power consumption of the cards and what AMD are hoping to accomplish. So, just to get everyone up to speed, these next generation GPUs are of course going to be built on the 14nm process, but AMD are new to unveil the fact that there are going to be at least two variants of these GPUs. One is known as Polaris 11 and the second Polaris 10, which AMD are dubbing to be the most revolutionary jump in performance so far, at least from their company. That's pretty damn bold claims to say the least. Now. Both of these processes were showcased to journalists at the recent CES 2016 event. Unfortunately, photography of the processes themselves were prohibited, so there are no images floating about the internet, at least as far as I'm aware. What we do know, however, is that the two GPUs are, well, I guess you could say at least guessing size, so while we don't have any official measurements, the smallest of the two is just around the same size as Car as Cape Verde. Now, Cape Verde is absolutely tiny. It's only 123 mm squared, but obviously it could be slightly larger, slightly smaller, depending, because these are just naked eye guesstimates. The larger of the two GPUs, however, is supposedly going to be around the same size as the Fury X. And in fact, it's going to be, and I quote, the successor of the Fury X. So, in other words, the bleeding edge, high level performance. Speaking of venture beat, Raja Kadori was very, very, very bold in his claims, which isn't a bad thing. As long as you can back them up with the hardware, I'm absolutely more than happy to listen to bold claims because I think it's kind of the, the meat in the sandwich that is the IT industry, right? You know, you, you look forward to these uh, revolutionary claims and you actually test out the hardware, and if it does really, I guess you could say, if it does live up to that, you're pretty damn happy. Anyway, we know that the GPUs are going to be power efficient, but he also went on to say various details which sound pretty damn impressive. So, essentially, we know some details regarding the graphics architecture. There is a new geometry processor, redesigned command processor, and a new fourth generation graphics core next compute units, which of course, as many of you are aware, form the basis of all modern AMD GPUs. Of course, we've had successive versions of the GCN architecture, and this is the latest. This means that we're going to have a very high increase in performance, at least according to Raja. And he also pointed out that the new multimedia cores and engines will enable various, I guess you could say, features that a lot of gamers are coming to see as necessary. For example, how would you like to record and stream gameplay? It's 60 FPS. Not bad, right? It sounds kind of cool. But this is at 4K which is pretty damn impressive. I mean, streaming or recording your gameplay at 4K with the um, multimedia core handling all of the encoding or decoding, depending on what you're doing, that's kind of a lot of work, to say the least, and I'm all down with that. In fact, to give you his exact quote, in summary, it's a fourth generation GCN HDMI 2.0 support. It supports all of the latest 4K displays and TVs coming out with just plug and play. It supports Display Core 4.3, the latest specification. It's exciting 4K support. We can have HAVC code encode and decode at 4K on this chip, and it'll be great for game streaming at high resolution, which gamers absolutely love. It takes no cycles away from games. You can record gameplay and still have awesome frame rates and and by the way, out of quote, this is probably the most critical and crucial thing. It will be available in mid-2016. Now, for those of you who have been following along with the Polaris architecture news for some time, you might remember us discussing a demo, which basically pitted the GTX 950, which of course is using a, uh, NVIDIA's current architecture, Maxwell, 
running Star Wars Battlefront at 60 FPS against AMD's upcoming Silicon. <laughs> now, the impressive thing here is not the frame rates, because the frame rates, as I've mentioned previously, were locked. So it's like, if you're V-synced at 60 FPS, you're not going to get 80 FPS just because you're switching architectures. It's effectively telling the software, that's as fast as you're going to go, Sonny Jim. But the impressive part wasn't the performance, it was the power consumption. I mentioned before, it's taking just 60 watts well, actually, it's taking 60 watts less power, which is half, roughly, the power consumption of the GTX 950. That is absolutely staggering. But the really impressive thing here isn't that the NVIDIA system is using 140 and the AMD system is using 86. No, 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 no. The impressive thing is that this is still very early silicon. <clears throat> Essentially, there are still tweaks to go, and therefore, it means that we not only could be seeing better performance with the later silicon, but we could also be seeing improvements, further improvements to the power consumption. So in summary, this card absolutely sounds like a monster. Now I say that kind of in isolation, in a bubble, because we don't know what NVIDIA are planning, but... If we're comparing this to what's currently on the market, it's absolutely a winner. In my opinion, this is absolutely phenomenal stuff. We do know that HBM2 is pretty much guaranteed, because AMD have confirmed that a couple of times over by now. And as you're probably aware, that means that the GPUs are going to have, you know, 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes of memory, especially for the the, uh, I guess you could say, the high-end cards. If you take a look at most games now, most games are happy to run at 1080p on a 4GB card without any question. I mean, to be honest, most 4GB cards you can probably get 1440p before you start getting VRAM limited without too much of a problem. However, the next generation of games, the ones that start to become really intensive, you can tell that they're just going to absolutely gobble up texture memory. For an, for an example, I was actually doing a bit of testing for Batman Arkham Knight, just for my own, just for my own joys, if you will. And I was testing it with a couple of different cards, one with a 4GB, one with an 8 And there's definitely a lot less stuttering with the 8GB cards, but obviously Batman Arkham Knight, we all know the problems with Batman Arkham Knight with the PC version. However, some of that can be definitely fixed with just throwing more VRAM at it. But Batman Arkham Knight is, I guess you could say, the, uh, I guess you could say it's the exception rather than the rule. But in the next few years, this is definitely not going to be the case. And more VRAM is going to be not just required, it's going to be, it's going to literally be like, you know, the bare minimum requirements to get next generation games running. Particularly as not only are we seeing virtual reality and other su such uh, effects, but we're also going to be seeing just better texture quality, improvements to artificial intelligence and various other things which are just going to eat up memory. And some of those are computer orientated, so some of those are just better textures. But either way you look at it, games are going to start looking a lot better. But... It's kind of cool stuff. I'm looking forward to mid this year, I must say. So my advice, if you're thinking of upgrading your GPU to something really bleeding edge, assuming you've got a fairly decent card at the moment, just wait. I mean, obviously, it's down to you at the end of the day. But whether you're going to go with NVIDIA or whether you're going to go with AMD, these next generation GPUs sound like they're just going to kick absolute ass. So yeah... Sign me up for the hype train, I guess. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.